This is the Nothing Phone 2A Plus. Now, given it's a Nothing Phone, the unboxing experience was, what's a polite way of putting it? Pretty basic. We get the Phone 2A Plus, a customized SIM tool and a Type-C cable, Type-C to Type-C beat it up. And that's pretty much it. No case, no charger. So guys, there are like four or five things that's been changed from the 2A. And in today's video, let's take a look at them all. My name's Ash, you're watching C4 Retech, and let's get started. <laughs> Now, though the 2A Plus doesn't have a charger in the box, the charging speed's been marginally increased. It's now 50 watts up from 45. Well, that might be subtle. Now, the most obvious change is with the build. We still have the same plastic sides and glass back combination. In fact, the dimensions are identical and so is the weight. What has changed here is the design to the back. The pattern underneath now has a metallic sheen to it. Personally, I like it. Feels like it makes the design more catchy, more unique. At the same time, I'd understand if you don't, if you feel it's too minor a change to matter. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And then there is the SOC. Instead of the Dimensity 7200 Pro on the Nothing Phone 2A, we get the Dimensity 7350 on the 2A+. Now, these are very similar SOCs. To better explain, here's what we got with the 7200 Pro. Two Cortex-A715 cores clocked at 2.8 GHz, six Cortex-A510 cores clocked at 2 GHz, and then there's the Mali G610 MC4 GPU, which was clocked at 1 GHz. Here on the 7350, the performance cores have now clocked higher, 3 GHz, and the GPU's clocks have also been pushed to 1.3. And nothing claims they get up to a 10% boost with CPU performance and 30% boost with GPU performance on the Phone 2A Plus because of this. In my testing, that seemed about right. Like on Anto 2, if you look at the CPU and GPU scores, about 10 and 20% better respectively. With the GPU test, Again, about a 20% difference. And the best part is that the 2A Plus didn't really throttle. So it's not like you get extra performance that you end up losing in a few minutes when pushed. Then we have the selfie camera that's now been changed to a 50 megapixel Samsung GN9. So it's the same sensor that's being used for ultra wides. Now with stills, I didn't really notice a lot of difference with the detail. They both perform about the same. Actually, I like the 2A's processing a little more. The skin tones felt more natural when you were under artificial lights. Outdoors, they perform more or less the same. Now, I'm sure with updates, the 2A Plus should improve. And as I was about to hit render on this video, the 2A Plus got an update, and it specifically addressed skin tones on selfies. And with this, skin tones on selfies shot under artificial lights, they turned out much better, and at times, the 2A Plus even nailed skin tones where the 2A missed. So as I guessed, with updates, they are improving it, and I hope it gets better. Now for video, the 2A Plus can shoot 4K video via the selfie camera now. So yes, it has an advantage with detail. What was surprising to me was even when I shot 18060, the footage was slightly more stable on the 2A Plus. Now with the rear cameras, the hardware is the same, but the images aren't. They're similar, they're close, but there is a slight difference in how they are processed given the ISPs changed. Now the 2A Plus is neither better nor worse than the vanilla 2A. It's just slightly different. Technically, there are some new software features, like say this clock widget on the home screen, but don't read too much into it. Nothing said anything the Plus has, the vanilla 2A will get via an OTA soon. So for all intents and purposes, both phones are gonna have the same super fast, super snappy software experience. And of course, the final change, the obvious one, pricing. The phone 2A Plus starts at a slightly higher price than a corresponding 2A SQ. But if you notice, there is no 8128 option here, meaning the minimum price of entry has gone up. So while the Nothing Phone 2A Plus doesn't really bring anything drastically new, it feels like a slightly refined, but also slightly more expensive Nothing Phone 2A. And for a Plus model, I think that's fair. Personally, I didn't like the fact that they launched the 2A and just a few months later, they're launching a 2A Plus that's more expensive. And I told Nothing that on call. And they explained that both phones were supposed to launch together, but as a smaller brand, they had growing pains issues, sourcing parts that led to delays. And that's why the 2A Plus is launching now a few months later. And I kind of understood where they were coming from. And anyways, to me, if you already own a Nothing Phone 2A, they've not actually done enough for you to have buyer's remorse. And if you are on a strict budget and you're looking at buying the base Nothing Phone 2A today, it's still okay, you should probably do that. You won't really be missing much. But if you are already planning on picking up a higher SKU, then maybe paying a little extra for the 2A Plus might make sense. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And I guess thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Ash out.